welcome back to the Short Vol Show. My name is David Lincoln, and today we have markets kind of unchanged uh, with a, a little bit of a sell-off, kind of a little action this morning moving around. Um, we, markets were a little bit higher a couple hours ago um, and just kind of moving around. Um, let's take a look quickly at what is going on here. And I'm going to switch to the view of uh, the markets. Let's see if we can do that here. And here we go. So um, if I move my big head out of the way here for a second, we can see the... Uh, this is a chart of uh, the E-minis in the last few minutes kind of uh, falling off here. Um, and a resulting uh, rally in UVXY. UVXY was below 11 at one point today. Now it's down, now it's uh, above 11, 11, 13, 11, 15 as uh, some weakness towards the open. In the last like 20 minutes, we've seen a sell off in the E-minis. Um, I wanted to take a look at the term structure today because I did notice something kind of interesting going on here. So let's take a look at the term structure. All right, so this area on the term structure, where's me, I'm huge on this picture here. Let me make myself a little bit bigger, uh, smaller. All right. so. This area and the term structure, if you look at the first two months here, June and July, that area underneath the first two months of the futures, between the first two months of the futures and the line here that represents the cash, that area right there uh, is, that's basically the money that you can make as the futures fall down uh, two spot over time. So I'm gonna see if I can do a little magic here. All right, so if I take that area right there, okay, and I get my pen out here, okay. Let's see if I can, uh, custom pen. Okay, so this area right here that represents, that area right there, that represents how much money is to be made as the futures fall to uh, the spot, okay? And so there are many people, when, when we're, we're talking contango, contango is the difference between the front month future and the second month as expressed in the percentage, okay? So uh, theoretically, every day, we're rebalancing, so we're selling a little bit of this cheaper future and buying a little bit of this more expensive one, and that tends to decay things. Um, however, the way um, things actually work is is that there is a um, a um, a model curve that um, the market makers uh, try to get as close to as possible. Um, with a e ETF, you have uh, you have uh, fifty thousand shares being created or uh, I, uh, created or destroyed. I hate to use, but uh, blocks of fifty thousand shares are uh, are either created or uh, uncreated uh, based on supply and demand, and um, there is a model uh, curve that the, the market makers are trying to get as close to as possible. Uh, based on um, where stuff should be trading theoretically. And uh, that is e essentially where uh, the prices end up for a UVXY or a, a TVIX. And um, this area underneath the two futures is arguably more important than uh, how much contango we're in. So if you add up, let's see if I can clear this again. Clear this. So, if you add up um, this distance here and this distance, 
uh, the, the sum total of these two distances is arguably more important than how much contango you're in, et cetera, et cetera. If these two distances is a larger number, then collectively, both whatever uh, the current daily average of these two futures is, uh, how much it has to fall it, uh, is more important than how much contango we're in because this represents money, this, this uh, distance here between the futures and spot represents money, right? So I'm not a very good at writing even with a pen, but with a mouse, I'm even worse. Okay, so that represents money there. And um, so if you've got a situation where, let's see if we can erase this stuff. So if you've got a situation where, okay, you're in steep contango, but let's say the curve was more like uh, like that, okay? Maybe you'd have more contango in that situation, but collectively there's less room to fall for the futures. And the falling of the futures towards spot is where your money is made. That's what causes the uh, ETPs to go down, and that's where your money is made. So um, we'd like to see the maximum amount of room between both whatever average of these futures and spot. Now, as the expiration cycle goes on, you're looking at different slices here. So, for example, at the beginning of the expiration cycle, it's all about this front month future. So, it's, it's all about this one. So, the first day of the cycle, it's like right there is your calculation, how much are you falling from here to here. As the days go by, as you get, you know, as the expiration cycle goes on, you're looking at this line here, then this line, then this line, as far as where in this curve you're, uh, you're, um, you are. And so, and then as we get towards expiration, it's all this future here, and it's none of this last future. So, um, so a lot of people um, get real caught up on this contango. What's the rate of contango between these two these two futures? What the slope of the curve? So, you know, contango. If you've got a curve that looks like this. Contango is greater than a curve that looks like that, and in fact, a curve that looks the second way it would actually be in backwardation because it's sloping sort of down. Whereas a curve that looks like that, you've got more contango. However, if the futures were flat here, even though you don't have contango, collectively between the two, you've got more to fall. So if you're in the middle of x, if the futures, if the curve's flat like that, with spot way down here. Let me erase this one. The fu if the curve is pretty much flat like that between the two futures with the spot way down here, you've actually got more space here in between the two futures and spot, and therefore you have more potential profitability than if you've got steep contango like that maybe. If you had steep contango like that, you'd have a higher contango number, but the actual area of of this box right here, this actual area, is smaller than if you had a curve like that. Then the area here would be larger, even though you have less contango. And since the area of the this 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 area here is your potential profitability, so larger the area beneath the two uh, futures, the more potential profitability you have. So in, in a sense, we'd rather have that that area is ultimately what defines how much profitability you can have. So contango, almost less important than that. And sometimes uh, the metric you could use to figure out this area here might be, uh, w would be the, uh, let's clear this out. The metric you w would probably use would be uh, this amount here plus this amount. And so it would be, uh, I'm not even going to write it because I can't write with a mouse, but spot minus M1 plus spot minus M2 or, you know, absolute value of spot minus M1 plus absolute value of spot minus M2. That's, uh, would, would give you, uh, a, a, a an understanding of uh, both of these, how far both of these are from spot. 
because once again, as the month goes by, this is like day two, day four, day six, day eight, uh, what you're looking at. And as the month goes by, you have more potential profitability if this area right here is bigger. Um, I hope that explains a little bit. Um, the other problem with using contango as a number is, um, let's think about what it means if you have very steep contango. Okay, um, what that means is that if you look out the month, the and and you look at where the futures curves are or where the futures are okay so the front month futures here at at a 13 and change and the second month futures up here at 15 and change that means that in the future this is predicting that hold on let me turn this down in the future this is predicting that Next month, vol will be 13, 13 and change, and the month after, vol will be 15 and change. Uh, and so it's predicting that volatility is going to go higher in the future. And so you don't necessarily want to be short volatility if your futures are predicting it's going to move way higher in the future. And that's sort of the problem with uh, contango as like using a steep contango to, to decide to get short volatility because steep contango actually means that vol is low now, but it's predicted to get higher soon. Um, and so that's kind of counterintuitive to getting short vol. But at the same time, um, um, contango, you know, another, another definition for contango is that if it or a thought about contango is that if it's steeper, it means that you're selling a cheaper price future and buying a more expensive one as you rebalance every day. So different ways of looking at it, um, and something to think about as we talk. I know this is kind of an esoteric view of uh, of the term structure, but it's something uh, that we have to look at. The term structure is crucial to understanding of the VIX. Uh, so many times people who when they're first starting out just think about okay what is this spot VIX doing and uh, they look at the spot VIX moving around and that's the whole story for them as far as okay well VIX went up a point today so I'm long T VIX I should have made money right I should have made if VIX went up a point I should have made two points on T VIX and that's not what's happening at all T VIX is based on these futures here and the, the way these futures move in relationship to each other and more importantly in relation to spot is what the whole game is about when trading uh, the VIX. So um, keep that in mind. All right, anyways, I hope this was uh, interesting for you and um, go um, enjoy trading today. Let's look at the markets one more time uh, before I leave you. So e is up only 75 cents right now. NASDAQ up nine. We The futures are up slightly from where they closed yesterday. UVXY basically exactly where it closed yesterday right now, trading 11 or actually slightly higher than it closed yesterday, which makes sense. Futures up seven cents. Both futures up seven cents. UVXY you would think would be up um, about seven plus half of seven so about 10 cents and indeed it's up uh eight nine cents right now um there's always going to be a little tracking error because of remember these different instruments that we're using some of them get marked at four o'clock and some of them get marked at four fifteen, and so there's a little tracking error because of that every day between these different uh, instruments that we're looking at. So sometimes it's not going to be exactly one and a half times. The, the average of the futures is not going to be exactly one and a half times. If you, if you multiply these futures by one and a half times, you're not going to get exactly the price of UVXY because of that tracking error um, between 4 and 4.15. And actually, the VIX doesn't... Uh, 4.15 is not always where the VIX and VIX futures get marked. They have a sort of closing, uh, it's not really a rotation, but they have a closing uh, situation and it can be any time after 4.15. So it could be a couple minutes after that, that time as well every day. So, um, 
So that's where where we get that from. And uh, as we talk, um, Dow futures are actually negative on the day. We're 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 kind of unched here, and we have sold off from the high of around 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, let's back this chart up just a teeny bit and see what we've got here. Okay, so. Yeah, so 6 a.m. was the high today, and we have backed off from them, although we still appear to be kind of an uptrend from uh, yesterday. Um, so, you know, we're still holding this uptrend here, so I wouldn't be... Uh, it's not like we're, like, real negative right now. It's more like nothing's going on. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. And I will see you next time in the short vol show.